Over the last couple years, my channel has been fairly dedicated to treadmill motors and using them in applications other than treadmills. Because of that, I get a lot of comments, I get a lot of questions, and I take those questions oftentimes to make future videos. This video is totally based on questions and comments that I have gotten from you, the viewer, and it is all about mistakes people are making when hooking up a treadmill motor. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. The first mistake that I see is not using safety wires. Now, what do I mean when I say a safety wire? Well, on this motor, it's blue wires. On this motor, it's this green wire. Now, I do not see a green wire on this particular motor. And if I was using this for a project, I would actually add one. So the purpose of the green wire is to ground the chassis. It grounds the body of the motor. It grounds to typically whatever frame it's being attached to. And the purpose for that is to create a path for electricity to flow to ground if there's an accident. If this wire, this red wire right here, is rubbing up against a piece of metal and the insulation wears through and it is suddenly in contact with the body of whatever you've attached the motor to, and you touch that, you might get shocked. But if the body of whatever you've attached the motor to is grounded, the moment it wears through, we're gonna trip some breakers and everything's gonna shut down. So that is why we use green wires and we ground things. Now, what about these blue wires? Not every motor has them. Clearly, this motor does not have any. This motor does have them. There is a thermal circuit breaker inside this motor so that if it gets too hot, it automatically shuts down. And that's what these blue wires are for. I've done an entire video just on how to wire up the blue wires. The second mistake that I see people make is they try and use an undersized motor for the project they're working on. So let's see if we can figure it out. This big motor here says two and a half horsepower. And this motor says two and a half horsepower. Great. This little motor is smaller. It's gonna fit better into my project. I'm gonna use this one. That is the wrong choice in most applications because when it comes to treadmill motors, horsepower does not mean anything. But the good news is we can use horsepower to calculate torque and torque means everything. I've done a complete video on that, talking about horsepower and torque and how it relates to treadmill motors. And I've had a lot of people argue with me. They say, if this is a two and a half horsepower motor and this is a two and a half horsepower motor, Horsepower is simply the ability to do work, which means all you have to do is gear this motor and it will work the same as this motor. And technically speaking, they are not wrong. But practically speaking, they are completely wrong. Let me explain why. Horsepower is the calculation of torque times RPM divided by 5252. Now, nowhere on these motors is listed torque. The numbers we do have are horsepower and max RPM on both motors. So that means we can work backwards. If we take horsepower and we multiply it by 5252 and divide by max RPM, we get torque. This big boy right here is right around four foot pounds and is good to 3,200 RPMs. This one is good to 6,700 RPMs and has about two foot pounds. So if we gear this one twice as aggressively, technically at max RPMs, these motors are gonna function the same. If we gear this so that it is turning at 3,200 RPM, 
it is going to produce right around four foot-pounds of torque. So yes, those people are correct. It's the ability to do work and it's gearing. But here's the problem. Horsepower is rated at max RPM. And if you are putting a treadmill motor on something, it is because you want to be able to vary the speed. And more often than not, we're gonna be running it at slow speeds. So the moment you slow it down, horsepower drops. But with a DC motor, torque remains constant. That four foot-pounds of torque that this motor has will be that at 100 RPMs and it will be that at 3,200 RPMs. Same with this motor. The torque that it's putting out is at its lowest RPM and at its highest RPM. It's a little more complicated than that at the bottom. You do lose a little bit of torque at the lowest RPMs, but that has to do with amperage and voltage and a whole bunch of junk that we're gonna, not gonna get into. But for the sake of this video, torque is constant. So gearing this to have the same torque as this works at the higher RPMs, but the moment you slow it down, this motor is never going to perform as well as this motor does when it comes to torque. Now this may have enough torque and this may have enough horsepower for your application, but keep in mind that you must do the calculations. Now the reason I made that other video is because people are oftentimes replacing AC motors with these DC motors. And those AC motors may only be three quarters of a horsepower or one horsepower, where this is rated at two and a half horsepower. So clearly this is gonna be better. But when you do the math and you compare apples to apples, the torque is all over the place. And we cannot compare the horsepower numbers because of the variation in RPMs. The only way we can do an apples to apples comparison between this DC motor and the AC motor that you are replacing with this DC motor is to do a torque calculation. The other thing is this may say two and a half horsepower, but a little further down it says one and a half horsepower continuous which means it can't run at the RPMs required to get two and a half horsepower continuously. It can be there for a little while, but eventually it will overheat. Hence the reason we have blue wires. Make sure that if you're replacing an AC motor with a DC motor, you do a torque calculation. Check out my other video on that. It goes into a lot more detail on why that's so important. The third mistake that I see is people are not gearing their motors correctly. They hook this up, they use the same size pulley on this as they have on whatever they're driving because this can be slowed down. They think of using gears and pulleys as a way to adjust speed, not as a way to increase or decrease torque. The problem with that is if you are driving something at a one-to-one -one ratio, so the, the pulley on this is the same size as the pulley on whatever we're driving, you're never going to have more than four foot-pounds of torque with this motor. Now let's say that your operating range of RPM is 500 to 1,000 RPM. That means you are never taking this up to the top two-thirds of what it is capable of. And we are at the minimum of four foot-pounds of torque. That's just wasted torque. It takes a certain amount of torque and energy to drive whatever you're driving. And in most cases, it never hurts to have a little bit more. So if my operating range was 500 to 1,000 RPMs and the max RPMs on this unit is 3,200, I would gear this at a ratio of 3 to 1. What that means is to get up to that 1,000 RPMs, we are going to be taking this motor up to max. At the 500 RPMs, let's say where we're starting, this is turning at 1500 RPM, so it's at half. The advantage to doing that is we have now tripled the torque. So instead of four foot-pounds of torque being driven on whatever we are running, by the gear ratio multiplication, we now have 12 foot-pounds of torque at whatever we're spinning. There are two ways you can figure out your 
calculation. You can either figure it for the minimum, if the minimum is the most important to you, or you can do like I did. On my lathe, I knew that I wanted my max RPMs to be around 1500. That's the speed that the machine was originally set up to max out at. And the treadmill motor I was using had a max RPM of 4500. So in that particular case, gearing it at 3 to 1 was the perfect solution to get the max RPM of 1500 and not be leaving any torque on the table. The next mistake that I see is people don't run a cooling fan. Now on this motor, the cooling fan is part of the flywheel. And on this motor, the cooling fan is part of the flywheel. But on some of these motors, the cooling fan is external. Most of the time when the cooling fan is external, people are running the fan. But when it's part of the flywheel, people are removing the flywheel because it makes it hard to hook up and they're not adding another fan. And it's super simple to add a fan. All you get is a plastic fan that fits over the snout and you have cooling. So make sure that if you are running a motor like this, that it has a cooling fan because it will get hot. I hope this helps out. I've done mistake videos on power supplies and I just got to thinking that, you know, this would be good information to put out there because I've been getting questions. And more often than not, when someone contacts me and says, hey, I've got this set up and it's not working the way that I wanted it to, it's because they've made one of these mistakes. And these mistakes are easy to make and thankfully these mistakes are easy to fix. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.